let's start our session. Okay, let's start our session by watching our trainers pro trainers profile video. Yuliana is an English teacher and teacher trainer who has worked with students and teachers with diverse backgrounds and varying degrees of ability for more than 10 years. She is committed and passionate about her job and she strives to teach, motivate, and guide her students by encouraging a positive and dynamic environment in her classroom. Currently, she works as an English trainer for Mentari Teachers Academy and Cambridge English Speaking Examiner. In her roles, she has created lesson plans and delivered training to teachers and schools across Indonesia. Her interests include designing creative, interactive, and engaging activities to spark the students' love of the learning process with the hope that they can learn to use English more fluently and confidently. Educators, please welcome Miss Yuliana Dewi. Hello, good afternoon, Miss Yuliana. All right, hello, good afternoon, Aja. So it's really nice to be here, everyone. Okay, right. So good afternoon, everyone. So how are you all today? Are you good? So give me two thumbs up if you are feeling good. Okay, so it's really an honor for me to see you all today. And then because there are also more than 100 participants, that is a lot, yeah? And uh, before I start, because uh, you are coming from 41 cities all across Indonesia. So I just want to uh, see who are coming from which island, okay? I'm going to say the, the names of the island, and then you are going to wiggle your hands up. Yeah? Ready, yeah? Okay, so that I can see if you are from Sumatra, if you are from Bali, if you are from Nusa Tenggara, if you are from uh, Sulawesi. Ready, everyone? Okay, now wiggle your arms up if you are from Java Island. Everybody from Java, including Jakarta. Jakarta is also in Java, yeah? All right, okay, so there's so many of you. Okay, hands down. All right, and then uh, wiggle your hands if you are from Bali and Nusa Tenggara. Bali and Nusa Tenggara, is there anyone here? Okay, Bali in the Tenggara, ah, Miss Naomi, Miss, uh, Miss Noel, okay. All right, and then, uh, we got your hands if you are from Sumatra, everyone. Oh, okay, Miss Kemurisa, it's really nice to see you, Miss Megawati, okay. All right, it's really nice, okay, Miss Kolida. And then, we got your hands if you are from Sulawesi. Everyone of Sulawesi, Manado, Makassar, hello Miss Wendy, hello Miss Mirna. <laughs> okay, right, so and then, uh, we are your hands if you are from Kalimantan. Anyone? Okay, so from Kalimantan, Samarinda, Balikpapan. Okay, coba dilihat satu. Ah, Miss Enda, it's really nice to see you, Miss Enda. Okay, and then is there anyone from East Indonesia, like from Maluku, from Papua? Anyone? Not that far, yeah? Nggak begitu jauh, okay, right. So, oh, Jambi, yeah. Jambi is from Sumatra, right? Okay, all right, so nice to see you with Jessica. All right, okay, so today's topic is a little bit kind of like challenging to us as the teachers, yeah? Uh, teaching readings to primary students, okay? Right, so, uh, but before I start, I just want to know uh, your opinion, or I just want to know your experience in teaching reading to your students. How do your students feel when you are giving them reading? Are they happy? So please type it on the chat box. I just want to know. How do your students feel when they have reading lesson? Do they like it? And, oh, they are happy. Okay, that's good, John, okay. Are they all happy? What about the weak one? The students who are quite weak in English. Yeah, uh, Miss Mafati, you can just tell anything. Mix, too many, probably do not. Okay, happy with some pictures. Okay, excited to know, all right. Most of them enthusiastic, enjoy. Some of them are unmotivated, that's real, okay. Uh, very excited, but apparently they got bored sometimes, yeah. That's a reality, yeah, so, so. 
Not really, okay. Your students are happy, some of them are lazy. All right, okay. Right, so, so because of the boredom in the class, okay, feel bored, all right. Excited with the picture, but if only text, they'll be bored, all right. So as a teacher, you need to be uh, the entertainers, yeah? Okay, so they're happy if they listen and read at the same time. Oh, okay. All right, so, so, right, okay. So one thing that I want to share with you because I'm also the local teachers here. Uh, so a little bit, we understand that, that learning is also related to the culture, right? Learning is also related to the way of the, the children are being, uh, uh, the children's upbringing. And then we just know that how do the Indonesian people learn a lot? Do they learn a lot by reading? Belajarnya kalau orang Indonesia tuh lebih suka membaca atau mendengar atau melihat. Which one? They like to see. Yeah? They like to see and then they do it. You know? Yeah, but not really reading. So reading is kind of like the last skills that mostly the Indonesian will do, you know. After they, they see it, after they try it, then they're going to read it. Yeah? So that's why all of in my lesson, I always put reading at the last activity, not at the beginning of the activities. Because if you put reading at the beginning of the activities and they see text, they're going to be unmotivated. Yeah? Okay. And then the reasons will be kind of like when you put reading at the beginning of the lesson, they will, they will just say a lot of excuses. I don't understand the vocabulary. Nggak ngerti, ma'am. Ini maksudnya apa? I don't understand the sentence. I don't understand the structure. Kind of like that. And the topic is boring. Kind of like that, yeah? So we are now going to work more about how to get them interested in reading first. Then you can move into guiding them to think using their brain. Yeah. And then one thing that also you need to note is that the behaviors in a class is quite different when they have the local teachers and when they have the native teachers, kind of like that. Yeah. They are excited with the native teachers. That's the reality, you know. But when it comes into the local teachers, they are being kind of like, uh, a little bit um, kind of like uh, what we call it, a spoil, you know. Ah, my Mandy will tell me, my Elizabeth will tell me, uh, my Felsa will use Bahasa Indonesia, kind of like that, right? So the attitudes will be different, yeah? So that is your challenge, you know, because they will not directly follow what you are telling them to do. So that's why teaching reading so the primary, especially the lower one, is challenging in a way that helping them to understand the words, comprehending the text, that will be your challenge. Well, with the higher level of primary, uh, the challenge will be more about how to cope with the burden, how to cope with the many excuses, yeah? How to get them interested in reading. And then also you have a, what is that? Mixed ability students in your classroom. Not all students love English. Not all students are really good in their English. If they are, then like you. If they are not, then that's your task. You're gonna need to be very creative with that, yeah? Okay, now let me start. I'm gonna share a screen. Oh yeah, uh, so usually my training is um, an interactive one. So that's why if you want to join later on, um, if I ask you to unmute, please unmute, okay? If there is no uh, kind of like noise background, so you can unmute, yeah? Okay. Because I don't like to talk in, uh, to talk with the monitor, you know? So it's kind of like a little bit weird. So I like to talk with people, yeah? Right, okay. So uh, just remember, yeah? Education is not the learning of the facts. So it's not about memorizing. So, but it is the training of the mind to think. And most of the time, Indonesian people think like English is only the memorization, the memory subject. So English is not about thinking because there is no number, yeah? But even though there is no number, you are still using your brain to get the others understand what you are saying in your mind. So that's what you need to uh, teach your students as well later on. 
And later you're gonna see the icons uh, in my slides. So whenever you see the icons, uh, the meaning can, uh, can be kind of like, I want you to speak, I want you to uh, send the answers in the chat box, I want you to raise hand, or I want you to join breakout room, but um, we are not going to practice the joining breakout rooms today because, because there are too many people over here. But I'm just going to show you which kind of activities that you can do with the joining breakout rooms, yeah? And then also you can, uh, you want to use the raise hand, so it's, uh, it is in the reactions, you can just use that. And also another, uh, what is that, online apps, usually the primary, all of the students like it, they like to use another online apps, yeah? provided that they have stable internet connection. So later we are going to use Mintimeter, we are going to use Padlet, um, and then for Mintimeter, you just need to enter the code on the screen or I'm just going to put the link on the chat box, the same like Padlet too, yeah? Okay, so if you cannot join in, so probably, mostly, it's the problem of the internet connections, okay? Right now, uh, so to start with, because we talk about the critical thinking. So critical thinking requires you to think more, kind of like you have to uh, think outside of the box. So that's why I'm going to give you some riddles. So the riddles are actually uh, the riddles for the elementary students, yeah? So I want you to answer it via the chat box, okay? Right, so. All right, okay, so that's okay, Miss a little bit. Right, so this is the first riddle. Uh, what has hands, hands and a face, but cannot hold anything or cannot smile? What is it? Anybody can guess? A club, very good, all right. So it's a club, okay. Very good because it has two hands, but and a face, but cannot hold anything or smile, yeah? Okay, you're very pintar. Right, now the second one. Remove the outside, cook the inside. Then you eat the outside and throw away the inside. What is it? You remove? Okay, Noel, you are really great. Okay, not donut, Pak Putra, not donut, yeah? So because you do not remove the outside, right? Okay, so it's a corn, actually. So you, you remove the outside, cook the inside, and then the inside becomes the outside. You're going to eat, uh, eat that and throw away the inside, yeah? Okay, so let's see uh, the third one. I have holes on the top and the bottom. I have holes on the left or on my right. And then I have holes in the middle. Yeah, I still hold the water. Okay, Mr. Noel, you are such a brilliant student. All right, very good. Okay, nanti minta hadiah ya sama Mbak Oca ya. Okay, so yeah, the answer is bonds, okay? All right, that's the last one. So let, let us see whether Mr. Uh, Noel can answer it, okay? Light as a feather, but there is nothing in it. The strongest man cannot hold it much more than one minute. Mr. Noel, you rock, really? Okay, Miss Leonie, you are correct. Miss Martin, you are correct too. So it's breath, everyone. Okay, very good. Right, so. Now, you know, when you are giving, uh, when you are given the riddles, you're going to need to think, yeah? Mr. So Noel, you can ask my Ocha, so what is my price? Because I can answer it four questions straight, kind of like that. Good job. Right, okay. So that's kind of like the thinking that you are going to get your students into. Yeah, get them think. Okay, right. Now, to start with. So whenever you hear uh, kind of like the word critical thinking later on, so that's, uh, it will always be related to, uh, what is that, Bloom's taxonomy. So if you still remember, so we're gonna just briefly uh, review it, okay? And then after that, we are going to see uh, kind of like the reading activities using the higher order thinking skills to improve the literacy. Because in the, uh, the literacy in Indonesia is quite poor. So first of all, your task is just to get them interested into reading, then help them to go into higher order thinking skills, yeah? Right, so the last one is that you're gonna see how the reading extension can be created to give for their uh, 21st century skills practice, kind of like one of them is critical thinking, 
and then also creativity, and then also communications. Yeah, so you're gonna do all of uh, what is that? If they are able to use art, then you can lead them into 21st century skills. Okay, right. Okay. Now to start with, uh, every time you hear the word critical thinking, so what do you have in your mind? Okay. Now I'm going to use an intimeter, and then you are going to type one word that is coming into your mind whenever you hear the word critical thinking, yeah? Now, I'm going to open uh, the Mentimeter. You can just go into uh, menti.com. Wait. Okay. Got it up. Okay. All right. So now, everyone, I want you to go into, uh, what is that? Mentor.com and then use the code over here. Wait, can I see the code? Okay. So I'm going to copy the link so that you uh, in the chat box so that you can just use it. Okay, you just need to click it. Wait. All right. Okay. There you go in the chat box. So you go to mentor.com and then use the code 96. Okay, wait. 96, 83, 82, and 14. Okay. Can you all go in? Oh, now you try, okay? Okay, all right, investigation. All right, thank you, Ocha. All right, why? Okay, you can just, uh, what is that, enter for about five words, for example. So you can do five entries if you want to. Analysis, okay. Observation, okay. Right, what else? So you can just uh, do it five times, okay? Logic, look deeper, okay? Problem solving, reading, out of the box, okay? And then uh, what else? Uh, relevant, okay. That's really interesting. Yeah, research, think outside the box, brainstorming, okay? Commun uh, communicate, discovery, collaborate, okay? All right. So you understand the meaning of kind of like, what is included uh, when you are teaching your students to have a critical thinking, yeah? They're going to do a lot of observation. They're going to do more thinking, focus, evaluation, okay, connection, compare, right? Okay, very good, everyone. Right, okay, tricky. Okay, so think deeply, excited. All right, very good, okay. Right, self-regulation, uh, self okay. Talking about self-regulation, you're gonna get your students to be independent actually, yeah? Going to be uh, independent thinker, independent learner. Okay, right, very good everyone, okay. Right, now I'm gonna go back into, uh, what is that, the slides? Now it seems kind of like you understand what critical thinking is. Uh, the main problem usually with the teacher is kind of like how to apply it how I'm gonna teach my students to think critically without being, uh, what is that, without feeling burdened, without feeling it's so difficult, it's so demanding, yeah? Because um, teaching them to infer is not that easy. Teaching them to analyze is not that easy. So in my experience, when I was in high school, or when I was in primary school, uh, my teacher, when my teacher said, you need to analyze this. But how to analyze it? I don't know. I didn't know, you know. So you, you're just going to need to guide them. You need to create kind of like activities that enable them to analyze, that enable them to go into discovery, that also excite their, uh, what is that, um, their interest. Yeah, right. Okay. Right. Very good, everyone. But one thing is that, Critical thinking is not always equal with something complicated. That's what you need to bear in mind. So whenever you hear the critical, uh, the word critical thinking, usually we're gonna think about it must be something complicated. It must be something that is sophisticated. Think about your students who are not really good in English. Uh, think about your students who are not really interested in the lesson. Okay, what is critical thinking for them? Maybe it's only about excitement to them, okay? Maybe it's only about uh, guiding uh, the, the, the uh, thinking process, kind of like that. So just remember critical thinking is not the same 
as something complicated, yeah, especially when you are teaching the primary. And then um, teaching then is not always about teaching language. You know, when teaching English, we tend to teach the grammar, the Indonesian teachers, yeah. So, okay, now English class, right? So if you are in the English class, you, uh, what is that, your students, and also we tend to teach the grammar first, okay? And the, uh, the others are the rest. Well, actually, the grammar also uses logic. You do not forget that. It's not about memorizing the formula. So it's not about subject plus verb or verb, S, E, S, subject plus B plus verb, A. They will be able to memorize it, but they will never be uh, they will never be able to understand it up until they are growing up. Okay, so that's what I experienced during my teaching. They know the formulas. You do not need to ask them to make it uh, simple present sentences or present continuous sentences. They know, but they don't know the difference. They don't know when to use this one and when to use that one. That's because we do not teach them to think. We do not teach them to listen. Uh, so we just, uh, what is that, um, spoon fit them with all of the formula, yeah? So we need also to teach them how to think, even though you are teaching grammar later on, and that now you are teaching reading. Do you think that when you are teaching reading, uh, you need to teach every word, every single word to them? No, okay? No need to, yeah? What you need to do actually when you, uh, you want them to think is kind of like um, building the interest into the topic, building their interest into your class, into your activities, and get them, then you're going to be able to have them thinking for you. Okay? Now, so if you see the Bloom's taxonomy over here, yeah? Usually critical thinking is related to Bloom's taxonomy. There are six stages of skills from low to high. So now which skills belong to Hawks, higher order thinking skills? So can you just, uh, what is that answer it in the chat box? Okay. So which skills belongs to higher order thinking skills? Which one? Create, okay, what else? Analyze, okay. What else? Number four to six, uh, there is no number four to six over here. So you have to, what is that? Um, type the words, create, evaluate, and analyze. Okay, very good. And then the others refers to lower order thinking skills. Yeah, remember, understand, and apply. Okay, very good, Miss Leonie. Right, very good, Miss, uh, Miss Riri. Okay, thank you. Right, so if we understand that, so we know that in reading, they need to remember, they need to understand, they, they need all of them actually, yeah? So in order to help them uh, into analyzing, evaluating, and creating, of course, you're gonna need them to teach the lower part first, okay? Now, uh, the, the other question is kind of like, how does Bloom's taxonomy influence reading literacy then? How? Okay, anyone want to uh, want to try to share? No one. Okay, just waiting for me to say uh, to say, what is that to open the answer for you? Kind of like that. Okay, so actually, um, reading literacy is kind of like the ability to understand, to use, and reflect the text in order to achieve one's goals, to develop one's knowledge and potential to participate in the society, right? So of course, when with that kind of reading literacy, with that kind of skills, you're gonna need them to help uh, your students to go into higher order of thinking skills. So that's why you know, the students need a lot of skills before they can be skillful at heart. Why? Mengapa mereka tuh perlu lots remembering, understanding, and applying before you teach them hots? Nah, ada yang mau sharing? Okay, so you can just send me the answers through the chat box. Why the, stu uh, the students need lot skills before they can be skillful at hots tasks? Why? Why do they need remembering? We are talking about hots. We are not talking about lots. Why? Ada yang mau sharing? Kenapa? Is there anyone want to share? 
Supaya ada fondasi. Okay, right. So that's also a good answer, Miss Alpi. They need to understand first before they are able to analyze. Very good, Miss Jatu. Okay, anything else? Ada lagi? Without understanding, they won't be able to analyze further or especially create. Yes, that's true. So, uh, lots is like the theory, hot is the applications. Okay, without strong understanding, they can create or analyze. Right? That's, uh, I agree. Okay. So, actually, lots will help them a lot, okay, to create the basic comprehension task. How can they achieve the higher, uh, what is that, the higher goals if they do not understand the meaning of the words? They do not understand the sentence. They are not interested in it, right? So it's impossible to teach them to create something or even to analyze or maybe to synthesize something, okay? So build the foundation first, then you can go further. But we do not need to, get, uh, what is that? Because the students are quite used into lots activities, you do not need to focus more on lots. But you, uh, in your teaching later, you're going to need to put them both, to give them both, the lots and the hots. Okay? All right. So we thought mastering the lots, the hots cannot, yeah, cannot be achieved. Like we need C1, C2, C3 as the basic skill. So, okay, very good. All right. Okay. So now if you have understand it, then... Hots for critical, uh, what is that? Hots for critical thinking will help them to analyze, compare, evaluate, infer, apply information in different ways to solve the problems. That's uh, kind of like the, the final goal of reading literacy, actually. And then to, uh, what is it? To achieve that kinds of goals, we need higher level reading literacy that will require hots. Yeah. So what are the skills in HOTS actually? So what are the higher order thinking skills actually like? Apa saja sih? What is included? So, you know, analyze, uh, uh, evaluate, create, right? Like kind of like the stages in Bloom's taxonomy. But what is it in real activity, in, in real classroom activities? What is it like? Anybody knows? Ada yang mau sharing lagi? Okay. And yeah, yeah. Participants can also unmute. Yeah, know? if you want to unmute. So, what is the main idea? So, okay, finding implicit meaning. Okay, identify the main idea and details. Okay, right. But do you think that the students will be interested in it? See, yeah, the students get apply what they learn. Okay. All right, so what can you conclude? Recreate a scene, okay. So, but before you recreate a scene, before you, uh, what is that, create a story of their own. So, Ms. Arian, you are correct. Connect the concepts. What is the concepts that you are teaching? What is uh, kind of like, before you go into role play, yeah? before you uh, compare and contrast. So, first of all, you need the concept formation. So, what are you teaching? What is the keywords, okay? Uh, kind of like, is it kind of like, for example, you have the reading of endangered species, for example. You're going to need to get them understand the concept of endangered. If you are teaching about the difference between old and new things, you're going to need to teach them that concept first. Yeah. And then after they understand the concept, yeah, later you're going to be able to ask them to retell the story, of course. Getting the big picture. Kind of like, what is the, uh, the whole reading is all about, you know? Getting the main idea of the whole reading first before you ask them to find out uh, what is that, the main idea of each paragraph, you know? Before you ask them to go into summary, okay? And then visualize. You know, you are dealing with the primary students. You are not dealing with the adults, yeah? Visualization, imagination is really important. So you're going to need to help them to visualize using pictures, using videos, using sounds, maybe. Okay. And then also what else? Okay. So problem solving, of course. So they're going to need to solve some problems later on. Questioning. So Indonesian students are not really good at asking questions. So whenever you ask them, do you have any questions? No, but, uh, nobody will say anything, right? Everybody will stay quiet. So kind of like they are not used to question someone. 
you know, what is it for? Yeah. So, and then idea generation. So you need to get the general idea before you start getting them into reading. And then in the end, um, what is that? The other thinking skill will be analytical. Maybe you want them to analyze. Okay, so if that happens, so what is happening around you? Is it the same? Not the same? Kind of like that. So it's kind of like analytical. And then practical thinking. Can you apply it in your daily life? And then if you want to apply it in your society, how? Kind of like that, right? And then you're going to synthesize to create something. Okay. So uh, 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 there are a lot of, uh, what is that, natural disasters around your area. So how to prevent flood, for example. So kind of like that's going into creative thinking. Yeah. Hey, okay. very good, everyone. Okay. So the, uh, the, reading, uh, the reading skills that students need to learn and practice that will be uh, lost, like scanning and skimming. So you do not need to skip that, but you do not need to go uh, too long with that too. And then also with the hearts, what you are going to do is that you are going to go into detail. You are going to go into intensive reading. Yeah. Okay. By doing uh, both of them, then you're going to enable your students to infer. You're going to enable your students to analyze because they understand the words, they understand the sentence, and then now they are ready to go deeper. They are ready to do observation. Like that. Yeah, right. So usually in the books, yeah, uh, there are some skills, uh, some uh, lower, uh, some higher order thinking skills are included, but only in some books, but maybe not in all books. But lower order thinking skills are often included in the books, like uh, yes, no questions, true false, or maybe multiple choices, kind of like that, okay? And comprehension questions. But higher order uh, thinking skills is kind of like maybe you find it in your textbook, but maybe not. So if you do not find it in a textbook, then uh, you need to create your own, kind of like giving the project, for example, giving them some problems to analyze, for example. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, so you understand the theories, right? But the practice is quite kind of like challenging. So here are some ideas to enhance the higher order thinking skills. Okay. So connect the concept. Kind of like when you are connecting the concepts, you're going to need to teach them uh, through pictures, through movements, for example. You're going to need to get them to understand, um, okay, so what, what can you do and what you cannot do, kind of like that. And then also the concepts like a global warming, for example, you also need to present that concept. Yeah. And then making inference. So making inference is quite challenging, especially for the lower grades. Okay, but if you are teaching weathers, for example, you can also ask them to uh, what's that? Wear uh, okay. Now I want to wear a what is that? Your raincoat. Now if you are wearing your raincoat, what will happen? Why are you wearing your raincoat? Because it's cloudy and it's. Uh, what is that? Uh, the thunderstorm is on, so it means it's going to be raining. I have to be prepared, kind of like that, okay? Right. And then also encourage questioning. Encourage questioning means it can start from you, then getting them used into it, or you can ask them to create questions for you, yeah? And then use the graphic organizers too. To uh, what is that? To to get the students like the first one that we did earlier with the uh, uh, critical thinking words. Uh, that are, uh, that is the graphic organizers that will help the students to uh, what is that? Broaden their range of vocabulary. Then they know that oh, it's related to this one. It's related to this one. Also, it helps the students who are visuals and then to relate one idea with another. Yeah. And then use alternatives. So you're going to give them kind of like possibility uh, to solve the problems because you are teaching the primary. You cannot just ask them, so what can you do with, uh, what is that with this one? So give them some choices. What are they going to do? Encourage creative thinking later on, yeah? So, but you are going to encourage creative thinking through your teaching, through your activities later on. 
And then if they are not able to uh, kind of like understand, uh, ask them to use their visualization, to use their imagination. So imagine that you are now, in, what is that, near the beach. And then is the beach, uh, that the beach is quite dirty. There are a lot of plastics. There are a lot of bottles of beer. What do you feel? So they, they can just uh, play kind of like mind movies. Yeah. And then elaborating answers by asking the right questions. So later we are going to learn how to do the question answer relationship. Okay. Right. So usually if we do not practice, then we do not understand, right? Yeah. Okay. So what another activity is kind of like see, think, wonder routine. So every time you want to teach your student into thinking, so ask them three questions. What do you see? So you give them picture. What do you see? Okay. And what do you think about it? What are your thoughts? What is happening? Kind of like that. And then I wonder, what does it make you wonder? For example, so they're going to they're gonna just make simple sentences. Do not need to worry about the grammar. You know, just see the picture so that um, they, they just uh, pouring the their thoughts into the pictures. Yeah. And then also, these are some questions that you can also use to get your students to think uh, creatively and critically. Maybe you can just give uh, the questions uh, once at a time. You do not need to give them all of the questions, you know. So depending on the text, depending on the topics, then you can come up with several questions. Yeah. So what are the pros and cons of what are the alternatives? So what, what do you see as a possible outcome? So what, what would you change in the story? Kind of like that. So these are the samples of the questioning that you can also provide your students to. Especially if the question, kind of like the um, evaluation question is not available in the book, then you can use this. Yeah? Okay. So now, before I go with the practice, after this, we're going uh, gonna to practice. You're going to be my students. So I'm going to go back to Ocha for a while because she has some new updates for you. So Ocha, go ahead. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miss Yuli. And educators, while you may want to relax for a short while, please allow us a video from our CEO and founder of Mentari Group, Ibu Anna Rimbapua, to quickly update you on the latest Mentari Group's breakthrough initiative to support reading literacy in Indonesia. Please enjoy the video. Halo Bapak Ibu Guru yang saya hormati, saya Ana Rimba Bua, founder dan CEO Mentari. Saya ingin mengajak Bapak Ibu sekalian untuk berkenalan dengan satu buku yang sangat istimewa yang baru selesai diterbitkan oleh Asta Ilmu Sukses Mentari Group. Kenapa spesial? Karena buku ini ditulis oleh 16 anak Indonesia usia muda rata-rata 9 sampai 12 tahun seusai mengikuti kelas menulis cerita. Buku ini kita beri judul Bagaimana kalau 16 anak Indonesia menulis cerita. Mengapa kita ingin menerbitkan buku ini, Bapak Ibu sekalian? Ada tiga alasan. Pertama, karena kita ingin mengapresiasi karya dari anak-anak. Kita ingin memberikan wadah supaya kreativitas anak dan bahkan anak-anak bisa bertumbuh. Ibaratnya mereka adalah tunas-tunas muda yang nanti akan bertumbuh menjadi bunga atau buah yang manis. Kita akan dukung dan berikan perhatian supaya janganlah sampai mereka menjadi bunga yang layu sebelum berkembang. Kedua, kita juga ingin membantu menumbuhkan minat baca anak. Dengan mendesain suatu buku yang isinya secara khusus bisa memancing anak-anak untuk ikut membaca, itu tujuan dari menulis menyusun buku ini. Jadi di dalam buku bagaimana kalau kita buat sedikit rupa supaya anak-anak terpancing untuk membaca. Dan kita ketahui apabila minat membaca anak sudah tumbuh, anak yang senang membaca akan mempunyai kecerdasan yang lebih tinggi, konsentrasi yang lebih baik, fokus, dan tidak heran kalau anak-anak yang minat membacanya baik akan berprestasi secara akademik. Ketiga, kita juga berharap anak-anak yang membaca buku ini juga nanti terpancing, termotivasi untuk ikut menulis buku. Sehingga keseluruhan kita akan punya generasi muda, anak-anak yang senang membaca, dan juga senang menulis. Mari kita dukung bersama Bapak Ibu program ini supaya bisa terjadi generasi muda Indonesia yang 
punya minat baca tinggi dan juga pandai menulis. Ayo kita lihat isi bukunya. Buku ini memang seperti saya sampaikan tadi, kita buat menarik gitu ya. Dengan ilustrasi yang menggelitik dan juga dibuat oleh anak-anak juga. Unik, menggelitik, ngegemesin, isi ceritanya juga judulnya lucu-lucu. Kelinci dan bulan, spageti bertemu hujan, dunia monster. Bagaimana kalau bayangan tidak mengikutiku? What if the chicken become extinct? Bye-bye chicken. Jadi ini ada bahasa Indonesia, ada bahasa Inggris. Karena otentik, kita tidak terjemahkan apa adanya yang anak-anak tulis. Kita juga buat, ini sesuai dengan cerita anaknya. Ada yang pendek satu halaman, ada yang dua halaman, maksimum tiga halaman. Sengaja ini, karena kalau mau menumbuhkan minat baca, kita nggak boleh langsung kasih panjang-panjang. ya. Ibaratnya kita berikan snack, snack membaca. Jadi baca dulu yang pendek. Kalau yang pendek senang, seru, eh mau baca lagi, ah yang agak panjang. Eh, tidak sadar atau bacanya udah panjang. Jadi udah mulai tumbuh deh senang bacanya. Kurang lebih seperti itu. Ilustrasinya juga unik ya. Sehingga kita harapkan anak-anak menjadi senang membaca. Baiklah Bapak Ibu sekalian, ayo kita dukung. Bagaimana cara mendukungnya? Ya, Bapak Ibu bisa memesan, kemudian membacanya dan juga rekomendasikan ke anak Bapak Ibu sekalian atau murid-murid Bapak Ibu di sekolah supaya mereka juga memiliki buku ini kemudian membacanya dan yang penting setelah membaca mereka bisa coba-coba menulis gitu dan kirim ceritanya ke mentari grup siapa tahu terseleksi untuk diterbitkan menjadi cerita karena kita punya cita-cita buku ini akan berseri-seri Bapak Ibu dan siapa tahu murid Bapak Ibu bisa menjadi salah satu penulis buku berseri berikutnya Dan berita baiknya, semua keuntungan penjualan buku ini kita akan sumbangkan untuk pengembangan literasi anak-anak Indonesia. Demikian Bapak-Ibu sekalian, salam literasi dari saya. Terima kasih. Wow, cool educators. I'm sure many of you can wait to see and also to read the stories produced by young Indonesian talented writers. And as we could see from the sneak peek, the stories are so imaginative, out of the box, so authentic, and also the illustrations are super cute. And more information regarding the book will be shared at the end of the session. And now we will proceed to the next session from Miss Yuli. Miss Yuli, the time is yours. Okay, thank you, Alja. All right, so welcome back, everyone. Okay, so that's also kind of like the book that might be, uh, what is that, um, igniting, the uh, interest of your students to read, yeah? Okay, so Miss Jelly, later you can just ask or tell about that, okay? Right, so I'm gonna share my screen again. So this time, uh, I'm just gonna need some participants to be my students, my primary one, okay? So later, um, the practices will be for a primary one and also primary six, because usually there's two different extreme uh, we'll have different kind of treatments, you know, how to teach the kind of like critical thinking into uh, the primary one, which is, uh, and then how to teach critical thinking to uh, what is that to the uh, sixth graders, kind of like that, yeah. But for the other grades, I mean, like, do not worry because all of the activities are uh, actually can be adapted, can be adjusted based on the grades you are teaching, yeah. So who can be my students? So you can just please unmute. So Ota, can they unmute themselves or you need, uh, the host need to unmute them? Yeah, they can unmute themselves, Miss Yuli. All right, okay, right, okay, good. So who can be my students this time? So I'm just going to need maybe 10 students will be okay, uh, 20 students will be okay, because most of the activities will require them to speak. Right, anyone? Ada yang mau jadi volunteer? Right, so Ocha, can you just point out the names? Okay, we have Miss Miss Helia, Miss Nanda Yulanda, Miss Mirna Purnama, mm -hmm. and also let me see. Okay, uh, Mr. John Bro, also okay. Mr. Tria, Mr. Matthew Turner. And mm -hmm. also Miss Sari. Okay, good. Ajeng? Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to be my primary one student after this, yeah? <laughs> okay. All right. Hello, everyone. 
Hello. Hi. Wow. So it's really nice to hear the voice, you know? So I kind of like, I'm not alone. Yeah. Okay. So now we are going to practice because if you just hear, you will just forget. Yeah. And then if, if you see something, then you're going to remember. But if you do it, then you will understand. Okay. So that's why I like practicing. So kind of like this is kind of like the part in my training that usually gonna excite, uh, bring excitement. Uh, the sample reading that I'm gonna take is from Hangout Student Book One. The, the title will be My Toys. So it's all about toys and playthings and how are the toys different from yours, kind of like that. So it's kind of like simple, yeah? Okay, so can you see uh, the reading, everyone? Is it clear to you or not clear? It's clear. Quite clear, yeah? Yeah. All right, clear. Okay, all right, good. Then. Okay, so we're going to start. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you guys? Are you good? I'm good. 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 Are you still I'm hungry? I have some are you noise hungry? In the yes. So I might stay muted myself. So. Okay. Work next door. I apologize, Miss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. That's okay. All right. Okay. Now, everyone, today we are going to have some fun with your toys. Okay. All right. So, All right. Who likes the toys? Me. I like. Okay. Me, me, me. Can I like that? Yeah. 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 All right, so you love it, right? Okay, that's good. That's good, John. Okay, so John, what kind of toys do you have? So can you show me? Everyone, can you show me your toy? So I'm going to give you one minute to bring your toy in front of the camera and tell me what is it. All right, ready? Three, two, one, go. Ambil aja lah buku juga boleh. Nanda, ambil apa aja nggak Nanda boleh. Yeah, yeah, Okay, right, okay. So what is it, Matthew? Uh, this is a GoPro camera. Wow, that's a sophisticated for the first graders. Luar <laughs> biasa. Okay, baiklah. All right. Okay, so Arjun, what do you have, Arjun? Arjun, what do you have? Can you unmute? Minta tolong mama di unmute dulu, bisa? <laughs> That's what happened, right? I have a blog. Oh, you have the blocks. Okay, very good. And Randy, sorry, what miss, have? I I have so many noises. Oh, okay, okay, right, okay, All right. So, Randy, what do you have, Randy? Is it a doll? This is like a uh, pink Power Ranger. Power Ranger, pink. <laughs> Randy, you like pink Power Ranger? Okay. <laughs> the pink Power Rangers. Right. Right. <laughs> okay. okay, right, very good. Okay, now everyone, before I, uh, before we start, okay. Miss Yuri will read you a short passage. Jadi Miss Yuri mau baca. Yeah? Every time you hear the word toy, every time you hear the word toy, I want you to stand up and show me your toy in front of the camera. Can you do that? Okay. All right. Yes. Yeah. So every time you hear the word toy, what will you do? Stand up, stand up. and show the stand toy. Stand up and show stand your toy in front of the camera. Ready, everyone? Ready. Okay, pasang telinga ya. Okay, so put your ears up. Okay, so children love toys. Stand up, you're not stand up. Okay, look at the toys. Stand up again, Nanda, stand up. Okay, are they the same as your toys? Stand up, okay. How are they the same? How are they different? Still sit down. Ready, ya? Yeah? It's an old toy airplane. Stand toy. up, everyone. It has two wings. Sit down. I like to play it. Okay. Ready, yeah? It's an old rocking horse. It's big. I like to ride it. All right. Still sit down, right? It is an old toy monkey. Toy. Okay. Very good. It's loud. I like to listen to it. Okay. These toys are old. 
Okay, very good. But they are still fun to play with. Let's play. Okay, very good, everyone. So now, what do you think about this warmer to your students? Will they like it? I think so. You think so, but the teacher will be very tired, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but they, they, they will like it, you know? You yeah, 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 yeah. Right? It's okay. fine. Yeah. All right. Okay. So that's our first activities. Now, everyone with your toys, what I want you to do later on this or that you are going to do later, yeah? Okay. Miss Julie wants you to show me. Okay. There are three toys in the readings. Ada tiga mainan di dalam bacaan, ya? I'm going to show you, okay? Wait, ya? All right. Okay. I can see, ya? So what is the first toy over here? Toy aeroplane. The plane, okay, all right. Toy aeroplane, what is it? Toy, toy horse. 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 Rocking horse. Okay, rocking horse, okay. What about this one? Toy monkey. Toy monkey. Toy monkey. monkey. Okay, all right. So there are three toys, right? Remember, yeah. number one is? Toy airplane. airplane. Toy airplane. Number two. Toy horse. Horse. Toy horse. Number three. And then toy monkey. Toy monkey. Very good, everyone. All right. Okay. Now we just look at the picture. I want you to say it out loud and quickly. Yeah. Wait. Okay. In the pinna screen. Okay. All right. Okay. So what is it, everyone? Toy monkey. Toy monkey. Okay. Okay. Now, yeah. so, yeah. okay. what about this one? Toy horse. Toy horse. Toy horse. Toy horse. I really like it. Semua pada les ini pasti ya. Okay. <laughs> and what about this one? What is it? Toy airplane. Toy airplane. Very good. Okay. Now, Miss Yuli will ask you some questions. Okay. If you know it. Okay, okay, it's a riddle, yeah? So if you can still remember the toys, okay? Now, it is made of wood. Terbuat dari kayu. Toy airplane. Rocking horse. Rocking horse. Could be toy airplane or... Toy airplane. Toy airplane. Okay, let us see. It has the wings. Toy airplane. Toy airplane. Toy airplane. Toy airplane. Toy airplane. Okay, we can fly it. Very good, everyone. You're doing a good job, okay? So let's try again. It is loud. Monkey, monkey, monkey. Toy monkey. Toy monkey. Toy monkey. Toy monkey. Toy? It's an animal. Yeah. Okay. It has symbols oh, yes. on its hands. Okay. So the toy monkey, yeah? Right, the last one. It's rocking. Toy horse. Toy horse. Toy horse. You can write it. It's quite big. A rocking horse. A rocking horse. A rocking horse. Very good, everyone. Okay. So, what is the purpose of giving riddles? What is the purpose? So, higher order thinking skill, isn't it? To to predict what the answer is. Yeah, to predict and then to get them into thinking, right? To relate that, just to memorize the words actually, but also you're gonna need to show the differences between the toys. Like, oh, one half the uh, what is that? The, the wings. Oh, okay, the airplane. One's half a uh, loud voice. Oh, okay, the toy monkey. One is rocking. Oh, okay, that's the horse. Kind of like that. So you're gonna associate the word with the the thing. Kind of like that. Yeah. Okay. So that's the riddles now. If you're going to, uh, what is it, um, connect the concept, the old and new. So actually the concept is about old and new toys. How are you going to present that? So before we go with the practice, I'm just going to ask you, how are you going to present the concept? Anyone? No need to be malu-malu. Anyone has the idea? Yeah. You the truth, how? Yeah, but how? No. To compare? Okay. All right, comparison is good too, Miss Riri. Anybody has, uh, having another idea? Yeah. For the primary one, so that it's easy to, uh, what is that, to, to understand for them. 
The students are new. John is old. Aduh, kasihan si John ya. All right, okay. So, assume one thing is new and the other is old. Yeah, that's also okay. But how are you going to introduce the concept? Oh, this one is old. This one is new. Using comparative adjective to uh, what is it to the first graders? If they are able to do it, then it will uh, it will be okay. Yeah, giving pictures of things. Okay, that's also one thing that I'm gonna do. Using pictures, similarities and difference using the colors. Okay. Old shoes and shiny shoes. So it means that you're going to bring the shoes in front of the camera and show them. Let them observe or touch the realia. Okay, I like to bring real object I can find. Okay, using pictures for all a new course. All right, okay. So that's a really good idea. Now you're going to be my students again, yeah? So I want it to be quite loud because usually the primary one is really loud, right? Uh, none of the primary one is really quiet. They are all be good, so they like noise, yeah? Gallery display, old and new things. Yeah, that's also possible. Okay, now you're gonna be my students again, okay? Now let's see. Miss Julie has two pictures over here. Picture A, wooden elephant, and picture B is the robot, right? Which one do you like more? The wooden elephant A or the, uh, what is that, robot dog B? Which one? Oh, okay. Which one do you like? A. Okay, John, you like A. Right, okay, good. That's okay, John. Okay. Now, look at picture A. Yeah? Picture A is sketch. There are a lot of sketches, right? And then also, but in picture B, look at the dog, look at the robot. It's smooth, right? Okay. And then, Uh, the elephant is dull, pudar warnanya. Uh, but take a look on picture B. The robot is so shiny. You see, so when your toy is uh, what is that? Uh, full of scratch, uh, full of scratches, and it is dull. It is old. Okay, especially if it is as old as you. Usianya udah berapa, ya? And if your toy is smooth, shiny. And then maybe it's not long in your house. We call it as new toys. Okay, we try again. Yeah. Kita coba lagi ya. Sekarang di unmute semua ya. Oh, pintarnya nak kelas satu yang pintar ini bisa jawab lewat chat box ya. Okay, baiklah. Right now, take a look at the picture again. The picture of the trucks. So, which one do you think is dull? Picture A or picture B? Dull. Picture A. Picture A. Picture A. Picture A is dull. A, A, the truck. Shiny. A, 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 A. Shiny is the truck. The red hot wheel. Shiny. 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 Picture B. 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 Very good. B. What do you call a uh, So picture A is old or new? Old. Oh. 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 Right. And picture B is old or new? New. 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 Oh. Okay. Very good, everyone. All right. Now, let's see again. So which one is new, do you think? Picture A. A or B? A. 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 Why A? A. A. Why A? A. Yeah. It's shiny. It's shiny. And then? Smooth. It looks smooth. smooth. And then? Oh, it's also oh. shiny, actually. It's colorful. Okay. Yeah, that's also shiny. But why old? It's old. It's yeah, dark. picture B, plain B, is also shiny. But yes, why you call it old? Yes, I do. Yes. Um, Because it is made of wood, maybe? Maybe? Uh, it's an old wing. It's got two wings. Because, why? Wings. Because of how long was it, is it in your house? You have a uh, plan B, for example, it has been six years in my house. Well, plan A, you have only maybe last month. 
It was in my house. So it's new. It's old. All right? Depending on how long it is in your house. So which one is longer in your house? Plane A or plane B? B. Plane B. It says O oh, as your father. Yeah? So that's why. It's O. Okay? All right? Different model. Nah, okay. We just found in grandparents' house. Yeah, so that's why you call it old, right? Because your grandparents is old. Okay. Right. Very good, everyone. Now, you introduce the concepts to your students, you know, which is not quite, uh, which is not quite easy to the primary one. Yeah. Getting them to think. Okay. Now, uh, one thing that you can do with the lots is kind of like, answering questions okay but usually when we are answering questions so you're gonna ask your students to kind of like okay so we're gonna answer the questions everyone what is number one what is number two so what is what if we do something different okay so now you are going to see uh, what is that two easy questions okay there are multiple choices a b or c and then what you need to do is that you are going to answer it using your hands. Okay, wait. Let's see, hapus hapus dulu ya. Right. Okay. Nah. Right. So can you see the questions over here? Okay. Can you see it? All right, okay. So if the answer is A, I want you to make a triangle, okay? Can you make it a triangle? All right, okay, very good. If the answer is B, I want you to stand up and then just put your hands on your waist. Can you do that? That's B. And then with C, I want you to do this with your hands. Can you do that? Okay, right. Jadi bergerak ya, ini semua biar sehat ya. Zaman pandemi kita sering duduk di depan kamera kan. Oke, okay, ready ya everyone ya? Oke, okay, number one. What is the story about? Is it old toys? New, eh, sorry. Where is my hands? Because, oh, oke. Okay. So, new toys? Or maybe this is strange toys. Which one? Old toys. Okay, right. So let me see. Siapa yang jawab? All right, okay. So that's the old toys. Very good, everyone. Now, still remember which toy is not in the story? The rocking horse, the monkey, or the train? The train. Very good, everyone. Okay. All right. So pintar-pintar semuanya. Ya. Miss Yuri itu senang punya murid pintar-pintar tu. Okay, right, so that's the lots activity that you can do with your students, okay? After you see that your students understand it, then what you can do is that moving up into a little bit harder, kind of like category, old and new toys. Uh, this time we are not going to practice it, so I'm just going to show you kind of like you are going to see, uh, get them into the worksheet and then you are going to, uh, what is that, get them uh, categorized into old toys and new toys, yeah? But we are going to do it today using uh, the chat box, cara menjawab, gitu ya? Right, now everyone, you see that there are a list of uh, toys over here on the slides. Now, Miss Yuli wants you to write down, okay, to write down the old toys. Okay, so can you write it down on the chat? Anak-anaknya pintar semua, gitu ya? Okay. So can you write down the old toys in the picture? Is the robot new or old? Is the marble old or new? If you do not understand the words, you can just ask me, yeah? Marbles, okay. Ini pasti angkatan zaman tahun 80-90-an, masih main marbles, yeah, okay. Rocking horse, marbles, very good, okay. Marbles, whip on top, rocking horse, very good. Teddy bear, all right, okay. Uh, whip and top. Okay, very good, everyone. Marbles. Skateboard. Okay, skateboard is old. Okay. All right. So, all right. Very good, everyone. Okay. Now, what about the new toys? Uh, can you type the new toys? 
Robot, of course, robot, okay, very good, radio controlled, okay, plastic bricks, okay, so you can also call Lego, yeah, radio controlled vehicle, okay, radio controlled, okay, Lego, so everybody like Lego, right, very good everyone. Okay, that's also one thing that is uh, that you can do with your students too. And then if they do not understand, you can just let them know what is the meaning because they can see the pictures, right? Okay, very good. Legos, okay, very good, everyone. Right, so you are really a great primary one. You have Lego sets, okay, nanti Miss Yuli mau pinjam ya, Nur saya. Okay, right, now we are going to compare and contrast, okay? Now, do you have your toy with you, everyone? Okay. Do you have your toys with you? Yeah, this time, Miss Yuli wants you to compare them with the picture, okay? So these are the questions that I will not show to my students, but I'm just going to ask them, okay? Right, now, so bring me your, uh, your toys in front of the camera, everyone. Okay, coba dilihat siapa yang punya mainannya ada di depan kamera. So, do you have your toys in front of the camera? Okay, nobody has toys? Yes. For you. Okay, so Matthew, Matthew, what is your toy again? It's a GoPro camera, an action camera. Okay, now compare to these three pictures, Matthew. Is your toy new or old? Uh, most definitely new in comparison. Okay, so how, uh, what is that? How are they different from these toys in the pictures? Well, I would like to say that mine is more shiny. Okay. And um, more te uh, high tech. High tech, okay. Yes. And I, I SD. Okay, next. What else? Still me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, it's made of different materials. It's not plastic. made of wood, yeah? Not made of wood, no. It's more so plastics, metals. Okay, very good, Matthew. All right, okay. Anyone else? Randy, I'm going to start with you, Randy, because yeah, I just want to see the pink uh, Power Ranger. <laughs> Randy, where are you, Randy? I'm here. Okay, Randy. All right, so you have the pink Power Ranger, yeah? So yes. is your toy old or new, Randy? Uh, it's new. It's new. How do you know that it's new? Because I bought it last month. Last month. Okay, anak kelas satu yang pintar, ya. How, <laughs> are, how is it different from the pictures, from the toys and the pictures, Randy? Mine, mine is made of wood. Uh, mine is made of uh, plastic. Plastic, okay. And they are from? Wood. They are, they are from wood. wood. Yeah, all right. And, okay. And my is already broken. <laughs> Yours already broken. Gimana teh enggak bisa dikasih mainan si Randy nih. Nanti dibelikan lagi deh, minta lagi ya. Okay. But what is the same about your toy and this toys, Randy? What is the uh, same? Uh, it's fun to play. Yeah, so it makes you happy, right? Yes. It makes you happy. Okay, very good, Randy. And I was at the SD and luar biasa, ya? All right, okay. So that's kind of like you can also compare and contrast. And then the last one is kind of like, okay, now with your old toys, will you still play with your old toys? Let's say your toy is broken. Ya, sudah rusak gitu ya. Masih mau dipakai enggak? So will you, will you play with the toy monkey? Fatima, will you play with the toy monkey, Fatima? Yes or no? Will you play with the toy monkey? No? Okay, Nanda, will you play with the walking horse, Nanda? Um, I think so. I still you think so? It. Okay, all right. I still play it, so I will play it. Okay, Randy, will you play with the toy monkey, uh, Randy? Yes. Yeah? Okay, wow. Randy, what about you? Will you play with the toy airplane? Excuse me? 
Sorry. Will you play with the toy airplane, Wendy? Oh. Uh, yes. You will play with the toy airplane. Semuanya okay. enak enak. <laughs> okay, right. Rina, Rina, will you play with the old toys, Rina? Rina Hendriani. Yes, I will. Oh, okay. Ini anak Indonesia banget ini ya kan? Okay. Fitria, what about you, Fitria? Will you still play with your old toys? Yes. Yes. Kalau enggak dimarahin papa mama gitu ya, enggak dibeliin, enggak dimainin gitu kan? Okay. All right. Now. But let's see, everyone, you do not want to have the old toys anymore. Oh, okay, because you watch Toy Story, I won't play with it, okay. Right, so you do not want your old toys anymore. What will you do with them? Will you just throw them away? Ah, Leonie, okay. You're going to give the toys to those who are less fortunate than you. Oh, you're going to donate. Okay, I don't want the old toys. Yes, Mega, you do not want the old toys. What will you do with the old toys? Give to charity. You're going to donate them. Oh, right. Okay, I really like you guys. Okay, so give to those who need them. Oh, Salve, you are really a businessman, John. I like that idea too. Yeah, you can just sell it in Tokopedia or in Shopee. Okay. And that you're going to fix them, Jessica. Oh, okay. Right. So you will save it still, Fitri, as a nostalgic thing. Yeah. So keep from my brother. Uh, oh, keep it from my brother or sister will be. Oh, that's so nice. Okay. Throw in the rubbish, Muhammad Andy. Oh, no. Okay. So put them in the storage. All right. So you're going to give it to your little bro. Okay. So really nice, bro. Right, okay, very good, everyone. Okay, save it as an antique, give it to my little sister. All right, now, everyone, because there are a lot of alternatives, there are a lot of choices that you can do with your old toys, we are going to vote, okay? So there are only three choices that you can do with your old toys. First of all, you're gonna give it to charity. That's number one. Jadi mau disumbangkan. Okay. And then number two. Wait, yeah. So what is happening? Okay. So number one, you're going to give it for charity. And then number two, you're going to make a, what is that? So we're going to make a, wait, wait. So something is not wrong. Okay. Right. So number one, you're going to, uh, what is that? You're going to give it to charity. Okay. So who agrees with giving the old toys with the, uh, to the charity? So please raise your hands. Siapa yang mau kasih untuk charity? Oh, Fitria nggak mau, Fitria. Nggak apa-apa. That's okay. All right. Very good. Okay. All right. Very good, everyone. Now, your, the choice for number two, what you can do with your old toys is that you will make a display box. Jadi satu kotak di mana kita bisa menyimpan mainan gitu. So who gonna make the display box to store your toys? Anyone? Fitri, you must be the one, right? Okay, John, you too. Okay. Number three, you gonna sell them, and the money that you get from your selling will be used for charity again. Sama aja ya. Okay, for sharing charity. Okay, right. Very good, everyone. So that can be the project for your students to do, right? So get them agree on which activities or which project that they are going to do. And then you, you can also do that with them. Kind of like, okay, so we're going to sell them. So you're going to have a little bazaar with them, getting the parents to buy the old toys and then give it to the ones who need the toys, kind of like that. That will be quite uh, a nice, you know, by the end of the terms, you can just uh, collect the money and then you can just, uh, what is that, give it to charity, kind of like that, okay? So you also gonna teach your students to have compassion for the others too, not only teaching them kind of like academically the terms, kind of like that. Right, okay, so that will be for a, what is that, primary one, yeah? Something that you can do, okay. Now, before I go into, uh, what is that, primary six, is there any questions or any comments or any experience that you want to share? 
Ada yang mau dibagikan? Miss Fitri, what about you Miss Fitri? Ya? Because you are smiling, so it seems like you are ready to share something. No, Miss. <laughs> okay, right. Miss Rina, what about you? Teaching uh, primary one is quite challenging, uh, mm -hmm. especially for uh, what uh, I, I teach uh, the first uh, learners, uh, which, well, sorry, without any uh, English background. So yeah. it's quite challenging. Yeah, quite challenging. challenging. Yeah. Right. So now my question, Ms. Rina, uh, will the activities that we did earlier help them? Uh, I used to ask them to what, to join the games such mm -hmm. as uh, uh, fun and touch uh, on the board. I write the uh, I write or I show the toys or the things. Then they have to touch the word of the toys or the word of the thing that I show them. Okay, right. Thank you, Miss Rina. Okay, so nobody asking questions. Yeah, I'm gonna proceed to. Okay, Miss Nindia. You raise hand, Miss Nindia. So please unmute. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, I just want to share something. Yeah, yeah. Last time we did something like that, so we made like a bazaar. Yeah. Uh, so it's like toys and books charity. Mm -hmm. So we don't, we don't just uh, we didn't just you know sell the book, but we also ask the students to buy it. So we ask the students to bring the books and toys. And then we ask them to buy it also. Okay. And then the money that we can collect, uh, we give to charity. And right. the rest of the books that we like, like the rest of the book that we we cannot sell it, we keep it in the classroom for them to read like a small library, something like that. And we because we also have like a reading lesson. So they are really excited with new book from the bazaar or something like that. Okay. Very, 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 very useful event, but it only happens like uh, two or two days before we have PTM, parents teacher meeting, something like that. All right. So the teacher's happy, the students happy, everyone's happy. Yeah, of course, right? Because yeah. they, they can apply it, you know? So they must be very happy with that. All right. Yeah, and also there's no lesson on that day, right? So the students yeah. happy, teachers happy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 really nice, Miss Nindya. So uh, critical thinking is also kind of like inbreeding uh, when you want to apply it, kind of like the bazaar that Miss Nindya had earlier. There's also kind of like one applications that you can do. So it's not always about something complicated. Yeah. Thank you for sharing, Miss Nindya. Okay, so one question from Miss Jatu, yeah. How to create a reason questions with hearts for reading in P1, okay. So actually, uh, when creating the questions, uh, first of all, the questions will come from you, Miss Jatu. Kind of like, you cannot just directly ask your students, kind of like, so anyone wanna ask me questions? No, okay. So one thing that you can do is that with them, is kind of like, you can play a 20 questions, okay. So I'm gonna start with the simple questions, like for example, can you guess, uh, what is that? The toy that is in my head, for example, okay? Can you guess the thing that I am holding in my hand, but you cannot see it, right? So you have to ask me questions and I can only answer yes or no. For example, is it made of wood? Is it small? Is it big? So start with that kind of questions. So we're gonna practice it, okay? Kita coba ya. So please unmute anyone, uh, anybody who gonna try, uh, what is that, who gonna uh, join? Okay, so now Miss Yuli has something in Miss Yuli's hand. I want you to guess, what is it? It's something that is related to, uh, what is that, school object. What is it? Okay, anybody wanna ask the questions? It round. Is it round? Uh, yeah, so yeah, it's round, it's round. Is it new? Um, no, it's not new, it's old. Is it it's sharp? Old. Is it small? Is it small? Uh, yeah, yeah, so it's quite small. Is it sharp? No, it's not sharp. 
Is it, is it from metal? Sorry? Sorry? Is it from metal? Is it from metal? No, no, it's not from metal. Is it, is it, is it from marker? <laughs> is no, it made it's not a marker. Is it made from paper? Is it made, made, made from what, Miss Jessica? Paper. Paper? No. Is it made of plastic? Yeah, it's made of plastic. Is it fragile? No, it's not fragile unless you throw it out. So it's going to be broken. Can we use it for learning? Is it right? You need it for learning. Is it shiny? Sorry? It is light. It is light. white? Light. Oh, light. Yeah, it's light. Yeah. Is it long? Can no, it's not long. It, is it a sharpener? No, it's not sharp. It's no, small. It's a sharpener. Sharpener. No, it's not sharpener. You need it for your online learning. Uh, online learning. Uh, mm -hmm. What's that? Is it a mouse? Yeah, that's true. Really, that's the mouse. Ah. <laughs> that's what be one, you know, okay? So kind of like when us uh, getting them into asking questions, uh, do not get them with some uh, complicated yeah, questions. Mind, yeah? yeah, just get them kind of like curious with what you have, for example, at the first thing. So now you can also ask them to, okay, now you have to guess what is the toy I am ima imagining in my mind. That's kind of like a little bit harder, right? So you can also ask them to do that too, so that they are going to ask you questions. So by giving them kind of like uh, the habits of asking questions, they're going to ask you more questions. But actually, you do not need to worry because children today are really quite critical, right? They ask anything, yeah? Bajunya beli di mana, ma'am? Bajunya baru, ya? Kind of like that, right? Okay. Because they are very capable, yeah? Hey, ma'am, potong rambut ya? Potong di mana? Yeah, you're welcome, Miss Jatu. Okay, so that's uh, 20 questions, the activity that we name it, yeah? So kind of like with P1, yes, no question will be okay, yeah? And then later, you can also start with riddles, Miss Jatu, kind of like, because you also have a, what is that? The riddle activities um, in my presentation. Now you can also ask your students to create question for the riddles, kind of like that. Okay. So what is it? Yeah. So uh, what is it made of? Uh, where do you use it? Kind of like that. Okay. So kind of like instead of 20 questions, you can ask them to uh, guess what do you have in your hand by asking WH questions. Kind of like, okay, so how long is it? Oh, it's 10 centimeters. Uh, what color is it? Oh, it's white, for example. So that way, you're going to encourage your student to ask more, kind of like that, okay? Right, so that's really nice. So I'm going to go uh, proceed into level six, yeah? Still in level six, now we are going to talk about more complicated, uh, what is that, topic that will be about environment, uh, talking about the problem and solutions later on, yeah? Yeah, so see, uh, what is that? This is kind of like more writing, small text, but um, what is um, advantageous from this kind of book is that because there are pictures, yeah? So the same like before, we're gonna start from lots and then we're gonna move into hots, yeah? Okay, so these are the list of the activities that I plan to do, kind of like see, think, and wonder, and then Q&A relationship, because they're gonna need to think kind of like uh, answering questions uh, and then how to locate the, the uh, to locate or identify the answers in the reading. So they also gonna do skimming and scanning questions as well, yeah? Okay, so here are what we are going to do. Sometimes they are not really interested in the topic, right? Okay. What do you think about the topic? The endangered species, not all students like it, okay? Right, so first of all, anybody want to try? So you just need to unmute later on if I ask to unmute, yeah? But this time, you are going to send me the answers through the chat box, okay? You will hear the sounds of the animals, okay? And then uh, there is a video about the animal, but you have to choose 
from which animal is the sound? Right, so ready, yeah? Huh? So you're gonna send me the answers through the chat box. So I'm gonna play the video <laughs> and then send me the answers, okay? Remember now you are a six graders, night class lebih langsung lompat, class enam, yeah? Right, okay. Wait, can you hear the voice, the sound? Yes, Miss Yuri. Yeah, can you hear it? Yes, we can hear it. All right, okay. All right, so what animal is it? So you can just send me the chat, so I'm just going to want to know. So let me see. Wait. Okay, rabbit. All right, mouse, rabbit. Okay, all right. So, yeah, so everyone is correct. So that's the sound of the rabbit. Okay, very good. All right, rabbit, everyone. Okay. So, yeah, that's the sound of the actual rabbit. So it's like tip, tip, tip. Okay, now the second one, get ready. Which one? Wolf, hyena, fox, or badger? Wolf, okay, right. Okay, very good. Okay, now next. Now, what about this time? Sheep, pig, cow, or horse? Okay, yeah, all right. Whoa. Okay, now the sound of the pig. So it's an oink oink, yeah? Right, okay. So next, the last one. Let us see again. Okay, anyone can guess what it, uh, what sound is that? Okay, so let's see the answer is gonna be the owl. Right, okay. All right, very good everyone. Okay. Oops. Now what about this one? Okay, so that's the sound kind of like, okay. Right, very good, everyone. <laughs> that's the hyena because they are laughing, yeah? Okay, very good, right. So that's not the lion, but that's uh, the sound of the elephants, yeah? The sound with that trunk. Right, so kind of like you are going to introduce uh, kind of like the animals to them that uh, you are going to introduce the topic, getting them interested in it, okay? Now, after this, what you can do is kind of like this one. So we're gonna do see, thing, and wonder, yeah? So everybody can do it actually. Okay, very good, hyena. All right, okay. So we're gonna use fatlet later on, yeah? What you need to do is kind of like, you are going to see the pictures, tiger, panda, uh, elephants, whales, and also the minnow, right? Now, what you need to think is kind of like when you see the pictures, what do you see? Yeah, what do you see, yeah? And then after that, I think, what do you say about them? What do you think about the tiger, the panda, uh, the rhinos, or maybe the lions, or maybe the elephants? And what does it make you wonder? Maybe you wonder where they live now. Maybe you wonder how, uh, what is that? Uh, how do they feel when they are uh, being kids, for example? Now we're going to go into the Padlet. You are going to share the, uh, what is that, your uh, response, okay? Ini kita sekarang ke Padlet, ya? All right, so everyone, I want you to go into it. I'm just going to copy the link for you. This is the link uh, in the chat box that you can do uh, that you can use. 
Ya. Nah, so that's the link. Partlet.com slash Juliana Dewi using I slash MBMTA primary. And that you can just go there. And then you will see this page. What you need to do in this page is that look at the picture in the page. Uh, so the picture is all about the wild animals. What do you see? So it's just simply kind of like um, you just need to click the plus signs over here. And then you can just type, uh, what is that? Your response, so for example, like, um, okay, so this is me. So I'm, okay, some animals. All right, Miss Kiki. And then what do you think about it? So what are your thoughts? Very, oh, the bees. Okay, right. So you can just write anything, basically, yeah? Okay, some animals. So bees, okay. So what do you think about it? What are your thoughts about these animals? Hey, what? Okay, wild animals. All right. Okay, right. So that's good, everyone. Okay. Right. Now, animals, wild animals. Very good. Okay. So, what do you think about it? Uh, there is a cute. So, do you think that lion is cute? Okay. They are all wild animals. Okay. Very good. So, what else? They live in the wilderness. Okay. They are dangerous. Some are dangerous. Some are not. All right. Okay. Right, so uh, they make me scared, okay. And uh, what does it make you wonder? Who took the photos? That's good uh, Good questions, you know. Who took the photos of the lion, of the tiger? Can we still see them in the future? Can we keep them at home? No, you cannot keep them at home, yeah? It's really dangerous. Okay, so don't do that, okay? Right, so they live in the jungle, okay. Their habitats are different. The kinds of animal, they are big, dangerous, okay. All right, jungle animals, right. So where were the pictures taken from? Can we see them at the zoo? Okay, I wonder what they do in the wild. Okay, they just uh, eat, sleep, and hunt. Okay. And then why uh, why I can be friend with them? Why I can see them near my house? Oh, no, don't, okay. So can I keep them as my pet? Are you sure? Okay, so we have to protect them. Oh, okay. Can we eat them? Are you sure that you want to eat lion? The lion will eat you. Where should I go to see all animals alive? Okay. Are they in the zoo? Yeah. So those are the questions that may be your... Uh, so it's also kind of like good to get your students into thinking, you know, provide them pictures and get them to, uh, what is that, pour out the ideas. What do you see? Kind of like easy, right? So I just see jungle animals. What do you think about it? Oh, they are so scary. They are living things. Oh yeah, they are different animals. Oh, okay. So what is it? Wonder, uh, what, what do you make it wonder? Oh, are they in the zoo? Can we, can we eat them? Can we have them as a pet? Kind of like that. So you can establish this activity as a routine. Yeah, to get them into thinking, you know. You can also come up with different pictures uh, depending on the topic. Then you can just still continue it. And then, let them share, okay? So using the Padlet is one uh, good thing because everybody can see. If you are using the chat box, it's kind of like uh, the students cannot see all of them, yeah? Right, good job, everyone, okay? Now, another question is that, what is similar about these animals? What is similar? Uh, the tiger, the reno, the elephants, the whale, the pandas, or maybe um, some of the birds the eagles that you see earlier, what is the same about them? Yang sama apa? Wild animals. Sorry? Wild animals, they are strong, okay, they are wild, okay. Yeah, they are mammals, okay. You see, they are seeing the concept, they are relating the concepts now. Okay, now, but my question is that, how many of them are left on Earth? There are not many, yeah, because they are, yeah, they are protected animals. That's very good. These wild animals are not as, uh, are not as many as they were in the past. They are about to be extinct. So they are endangered. They are, uh, they need to be protected, kind of like that. So we call them endangered species because they are about to extinct, um, because people harm them, people eat them, 
people put them into the cages so that they cannot uh, they cannot breed you know so the number of these animals are getting less and less and less every year they are nearly extinct very good noodle okay and not only mammals some of the birds too right so here you are establishing the concept of endangered species so uh, if you are putting the pictures just make sure that the pictures are appropriate to the topic yeah okay and then after this what you can do with the reading so what you can do with the reading is that uh, answering the questions right so we're just going to do the uh, skimming and scanning actually but you're going to introduce your students into q and a relationship how gimana caranya kita memperkenalkan hubungan antara pertanyaan dan jawaban so sometimes the students just do not read the questions they are busy uh, choosing the answers right how are you going to introduce that okay so you, we're gonna do it together yeah okay nah. so you see one paragraph over here everyone can you see it so yeah okay nah. so what do uh, uh, endangered animals need so you see the question you need to find out the keywords kata kunci so the keyword is what is the keyword in this question apa coba kata kuncinya Endangered. endangered okay endangered. yeah endangered so if you see uh, if you can't find the the, the keyword in the question then you just need to find out the same word in the reading okay All right so the keyword is endangered so can you find the keyword uh, the the same word in the reading too so you find it over here okay but and read the whole sentence is it answering the question what do endangered animals mean? Is it answering the question? No, right? No. 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 Okay. So we're gonna go into another a. Uh, what is that? Okay, another endangered. What about this one? Now read the sentence. Endangered animals or those that scientists think are at risk of disappearing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's the answer. The answer. That's now true. you can find kind of like uh, the answer to the questions. Okay. Jadi bisa ketemu. So that's kind of like the way you're going to teach your students to find out a, what is that? Uh, the relationship within the question and answer. So once again, yeah, kalian pintar-pintar. What is the word word fun for nature? What is the keyword? What is the keyword? Fun. Okay. So can you find it in the reading? Yes. 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 Okay. Where? It's in that one. That one. Yes. That one. This one. Okay. Right. Yes. This one. Yeah. Okay. So what? What? Find for nature. All right. So what is the word? What? Find for nature. Organization. It's an organization that works to protect the environment. Protect the environment. All right. Very good. Okay. So we're gonna do once more. So what about this time? What is the keyword? What is the keyword? Endangered animals. Yes, I see. So actually the example. But now you will not find the word examples in the text. How do you get the answers then? Certain, certain, certain types. types. Certain types. So because the example and certain, certain types, types of elephants, certain types of elephants, gorillas, monkeys. Monkey. Yeah. yeah. So there, that's uh, that's the way you're gonna find out uh, the answer to the question. Sometimes they may be the same words, the same keywords, but sometimes they might be different keywords. So we're gonna do it again, yeah? Karena ini pintar pintar ya. Okay. mau hapus hapus dulu. Right, so the question now is kind of like this way. It. Okay, so why are certain animals endangered? What is the keyword? Okay, what is the keyword then over here? Kata kuncinya apa? So you can type it. What is the keyword? Yang mana keywordnya? Why are certain animals endangered? Why? Why? Okay. Why? And 
Certain danger. Right? Certain animals. Certain. Certain animals. Okay. And? Danger. Okay. And you find it over here. So you will not find the word why. You will not find the yeah. word certain. Yeah. So why is usually related to? Reasons. Reasons. Okay. Very good. Ni anak pintar semuanya ya. So there in that sentence, you will find the answers. So why are certain animals endangered? Why? Because? Pollution and hunting. Because climate can change. Climate, okay. change. climate change. Okay. Climate Pollution change. and hunting. Very good, everyone. Okay. Now, the next question will be like, um, how do humans affect animals' lives? What is the keyword? Human. Humans affect how? How? Okay. Human. How, how and human human uh, how human humans affect. affect. Okay. All right. Now you're gonna find out the word human, for example, over here. Can you find it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, after yes. also here, right? fourth line. Yeah. All right. So also humans are destroying animals' homes. And then how? The question is how, right? Okay. So how humans are destroying animals' homes? To make way for, make, building. make way for buildings. Because, yeah, because they are make ways for make buildings. For buildings. Ah, and then also because? Pollution and pollution 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 and hunting. Pollution and hunting. And hunting. Mm -hmm. How do you know that pollution or hunting are done by humans? Because pollution came from. Yeah, animals. animals will not do that, right? Animals yeah. will not produce pollution. Animals will not go hunting, right? So only humans will do, uh, will, will create pollutions and hunting the animals and then it caused them to be endangered. All right? Great job, everyone. Okay. So that's also one way that you can do to get your students to uh, find the relationship between the questions and the answers. Okay. So do you have any idea? Any other idea that you want to share? Ada idea lain? Oh, okay. Now, this is, uh, what is that? The time is yours, for example. So what can you do to help your students to find out, uh, what is that, to find the relationship between questions and answers? Apalagi yang bisa dilakukan? Using similar words, okay, using the synonyms and finding the relationship between the words, okay. So for example, the questions are, uh, what are the three ways people could help? You know, okay. So there is no word three over over there. So what can you do to find out um, the answers? How about skimming? Uh, skimming, okay. So what are you going to skim? The word what? The word what, okay. But only one what. So the three question ways. is actually kind of like three ways, right? Uh -huh. uh -huh. So how are you going to get them to get into three ways? One thing. One thing, very good. So you're going to look at them into that. Okay, one thing. Okay. What else? The word how. The word how. Okay, if people know about, okay, they will. we could also, so you, you know, also find the word also, also. Yeah. that's showing another idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, 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 and if you recycle, so another idea. So there are three ideas already. Right. So also, uh, when you are trying to get them to find a what is that the relationship between the uh, the question and the answers, you can also point out to the connecting word, the sequencing words. Very good, Mr. Martin. Yeah. Okay. So it's not only about first, second, and next, but it's also about the other. Uh, we call it uh, the other uh, the other connecting words. Yeah. Right. Okay. Very good, everyone. Nah, kalau ada anak kelas 6 nih jadi berpikir beneran ya jadinya ya. Hey, right now. So we're gonna go next, yeah. So sometimes um, this is a question that is not in the book, but you can also help them to think critically by differentiating between facts and opinions, yeah. Okay. So still, the facts and opinions are all about the animals, the engine, uh, animals. You just need to make it yourself. Okay, right. So decide if the statement belongs to facts or opinions. Yeah. And then clap once if it is a fact. 
clap once. And then if it is an opinion, clap twice. Okay. So supposedly, usually because they are uh, in the sixth graders, they know the differences between facts and opinions. So supposedly you have taught them earlier before uh, reading. So you're just going to go into, okay, differentiating between facts and opinions to get them in the thinking, yeah? So what will you do if you uh, if you find it as a fact? Clap once, yeah? If it is an opinion, what will you do? Clap twice, okay? So please unmute so that we can hear your, uh, your sound. Uh, please unmute. Yeah, ada suaranya, yeah? Okay, thank you, Neil. All right, okay. Ready, yeah, everyone, yeah? Clap once, but wise opinion. Okay. Elephants are the most elegant animal in the world. Which one? Opinion, yeah? Opinion, according to you, according to who? Because you're going to have different uh, uh, of the ideas about the elephant. Right, certain types of animals like gorillas, rhinos, tigers, and elephants are endangered. Fact. 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 Okay, of the plants, that's the fact. Climate change contributes to the endangered animals. Fact. 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 Okay, humans should do something to save endangered animals from extinctions. Right. Opinion. Opinion, right? Opinion. Yeah. Why opinion? Why not facts? Because of the word should, right? So this is suggestion. Yeah, it's not, not showing kind of like the facts, you know? Okay, very good, everyone. So you can follow up the reading with kind of like maybe five facts and opinions, questions, five uh, one set facts and opinion statements. So it doesn't need to be very complicated. Just take it from the facts from uh, the animals mentioned in the reading, yeah, because there are a lot of sources about that. Right. So next, what you can do, because you're going to move a little bit into evaluating, into analyzing, then they are going to compare and contrast actually. Yeah? Now, if tigers um, are endangered, and then elephants are endangered, rhinos are endangered. Now, do you find, uh, what kind of animals do you find in Indonesia that are the same like the ones in the books? Contoh binatang yang sama-sama disebutin di dalam bacaan. Yang ternyata juga, uh, what is that? Endangered, yeah? Okay, thank you, Martin, right. Okay. So what are so are there tigers in Indonesia? Yes. yes. Are there elephants in Indonesia? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Are there eagles in Indonesia? Yes. yes. Yeah. Not on tigers, right? Are there whales in Indonesia? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. So because uh, tigers, elephants, and then uh, rhinos are a what is that considered to be endangered? Do you yeah. think that they are also endangered in Indonesia? Yes. 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 Right? Also, yeah. Yeah. You also have, yeah, orang utan. So orang utans are also endangered too. So yeah. you're dark in Rawasti. Okay, Rawasti. Yeah. And then also you have kind of like Jalak Bali. So they are also endangered. So now you are getting them into comparing the reading with the real situation uh, in the place they are living. They are now living in Indonesia. So you can just compare them. Yeah. Anua, nga Leoni, luar biasa. Okay, yeah. Anua from, okay, Javan Hawk Eagle. Yeah, okay. Right, now, uh, you get what you can, uh, what you can do to them is kind of like, you can give another uh, reading that is almost the same, that is about kind of like authentic Indonesian, uh, 11 indigenous animals only exist in Indonesia, yeah? Now, what you can do with your student is that, uh, um, I'm not going to do that anyway, because uh, the activity is better done in using the joining breakout rooms. So you can just share the readings with them, and then you can ask them to kind of like find out which animal, what animals are endangered, 
And then where do you find them? In what region? And why are they becoming endangered? The reasons, yeah? So that way, they are going to try to categorize, like, for example, this is the result, yeah? Sumatran tigers, uh, is, uh, they are found in Sumatra Island, and they, uh, they become endangered because of deforestation, for example. So they're going to make a list, and then they, get, they can also present it in front of the class with you. Kind of like that. So the reading is short, uh, really kind of like one animal, maybe about one paragraph. So uh, it's quite easy, the same level as they are, uh, what is that reading, yeah? And also the last one that you can do if you want them to share, uh, you don't want them to be very noisy. So again, you can use Padlet, okay? But you can also use Padlet to kind of like, uh, okay, so we are going to do kind of like a little bit problem solving. So, for example, you can just uh, ask them to choose. If you could save only three endangered animals, which animals do you choose to save and why? Yeah, so you choose three animals. So they can work with the groups if they want to. So the question is kind of like which endangered animals because they have read two readings one from the textbook and the other one is the supplementary reading. So they can just choose which, uh, which animals they want to save, why they choose the animal, why they want to save the animal instead of the others. And then how are they going to save them from extinctions? Kind of like that, okay. So, but before we go into the why and how, so we are going just going into the chat, okay, with yeah, okay. So how do we stop students from copy pasting in the current online era? Okay, so later, I'm just gonna address that later on, yeah? Okay, so everyone, now I want you to write down on your chat, so which three endangered animals you want to save? Tiga binatang yang hampir punah, yang mau kalian selamatkan. So what are they? So you choose them, okay? Right, so you can just type it uh, kind of like in, in the chat if you want to. So then we can discuss later on, yeah. So you can ask your student to uh, type it in the chat box later on. Komodo, Anoa, and Chandra Wasi. Very good, Miss Jenny. Sumatran tiger, orangutan, and elephants. Sangka. Elephants, Komodo, and Chandra Wasi. Okay. All right, pandas, whales, Komodo, tapir, Sumatran tiger. Very good, all right, okay. Right, so you choose well, quite specific uh, Indonesian animals, right, actually. Kura-kura belawa, West Java, well, luar biasa, Bismillah. Okay, and uh, Komodo and Cendrawasi. Okay, so maybe someone from Sulawesi, you will save Anoa. All right, okay. And then someone from Bali, you will search Jalak Bali, for example. And then, you, oh, okay, so the Rhinos, yeah, Miss Jessica, yeah? Okay. All right, so you can just say Venus, okay? Right, uh, Komodo, Orangutan, okay. So now think about why do you want to, why, why do you choose those three animals? Why? Kenapa kok tiga itu? Kenapa kok nggak yang lain? Why? Why do you choose those three animals? Oh, Miss Rizky want to say four animals, okay. They are cute, Miss Mega, they are not cute if they bite you, okay. Mosquitoes, rats, and cockroaches, they are not uh, they are not endangered, yeah? They will always be there on Earth. They will not go extinct, okay? Because they are unique, okay? Because they are our icons, all right? Indonesian icons, okay? Kasuari, yeah, they are unique. They are rare animals. They are our nation heritage, okay? All right, so you start to relate with the, uh, uh, what is that, the real problem, you know? They are favorite animals. Favorite animals for who? You know, okay, so if he's a favorite, it's kind of like, okay, because I like it, then I'm just gonna save it, kind of like that. Because animals are better than humans. All right, Tom, but that is the reason why you choose three endangered animals to save, okay? They almost extinct, yeah, because they are authentically Indonesian and I'm Indonesian, okay. The icons of our rainforest, menumbuhkan nationality, ya kan? Okay, uh, their heritage. Okay, then how are you going to save them? What can you do? 
Yeah, that will be your project, kind of like that, okay? So you can leave the third one as the project. So the project can be kind of like, they can also uh, create a poster, uh, what will be the solutions to the problems because they have chosen three animals, you know? So this is the sample of the poster that they can make. So they can use kind of like a Canva, they can also use a, what is that? The uh, picture editors, or they can use Photoshop so if they can use it because they are already in the six graders. Uh, it doesn't need to be very sophisticated. Just uh, the information that you want to have is kind of like the what life they are going to save and why, because uh, uh, what are the threats? Yeah. So what are the threats to these animals? And then how are you going to save them? Kind of like that, okay? So here are the samples. Then you can just ask them to uh, come up with the idea. They're going to work together. And then um, if possible, you can also ask them to create the posters using Microsoft Word. That will be okay too, because they can use the shapes. They can use the colors. They can insert pictures, yeah? Just to minimize the possibility that somebody else is going to do it for them. So um, I just suggest you that uh, ask them to use the, what is that, the, the applications they are familiar with. So in that case, using Microsoft Works or a PowerPoint will also do. Yeah, because it can display with the shapes. So actually, you can display with the shapes over here, inserting pictures, then that will be okay. So it doesn't need to be very sophisticated using the Photoshops because somebody will do it for them. Right, okay. Okay, make action plan. Yes, Noel, it's kind of like uh, the action plan, you know? So they just put it into the posters, kind of like that. Okay, right, so... Kind of like you see the activities that is moving from lots into hots. So the lots itself is actually to get the students interested into the topic. And then later on, you're going to move a little bit, uh, what is that, uh, move uh, smoothly into kind of like the higher order thinking skills, you know. And the end, they are going to create. In the end, they are going to do the problem solving, yeah. So the first activity is kind of like the uh, very, very kind of like not really sophisticated, kind of like guess uh, the animal sounds, okay? Doing the see, things and wonder. And then after that, they are going to, uh, what is that? Uh, find it, uh, connecting the concepts, trying to understand the connection between uh, the questions and the answers in the text. So they are analyzing the text. And then after that, you can go into kind of like compare uh, facts and opinions, and then going with a, what is that? Comparing the two texts and then coming up with the problem and solutions, kind of like that. So it's kind of like trying to guide your students uh, in a smooth way so that they do not feel kind of like that I had to do it, that it is difficult. So uh, make them think that I can do it too. It's not difficult. It's not boring as well. Kind of like that, yeah? All right, okay. So I think that is all. So Ocha, so I'm going to go back to you because now I think this is a time for question and answers or maybe comments, Ocha. Yes. Okay, right. thank, you. okay thank you very much, Ms. Lee, for your station. So educators, if you have any question or you want to deliver your ideas to Ms. Lee and all of us, you can... Uh, uh, type it on the chat box or you also can use the raise hand feature well actually uh, Miss Yuli we had yeah. a question before right yeah yeah. yeah yeah he was can you asking, read that for me Aja, please yeah. from Mr. Martin Robinson how do we stop students from copy pasting in the current online era hmm. all right okay thank you Mr. Martin all right so in the uh, online era uh, with less monitoring, somehow you cannot control your student for, uh, your students from copy pasting, right? Yeah. Okay. So somehow it will happen, you know. So how to prevent them from copy pasting is kind of like, um, first of all, do not give the task that is too difficult for them. Kind of like they feel it's really difficult, but I think I can find it in the internet, so I just copy paste it. 
kind of like that, okay? All right, so you need to design the activities in a way that's uh, going to move from the small part of the language into kind of like the, uh, the biggest part of the language itself. So if you see my activities before, so do you think that the student will copy paste? Because I don't think... No, 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 of course not. Yeah, of, of course, course we, give, we, we also have to give them tasks or write yeah, yeah. tasks. Yeah, you're going to give them tasks. So yeah. if you want to give them tasks, Mr. Martin, so I just suggest you to differentiate between facts and opinions because they cannot find it in the internet, right? That's your own, okay? And then also the task kind of like uh, what kind of animals that you want to save kind of like more personal instead of the facts, you know, kind of like personal uh, questions like, uh, that I, I gave earlier, uh, what, uh, what are three animals, if you could save them, that you would choose? Quite personal, you know, yeah. the students will not be able to find it in the internet. Can yeah? I ask another question? Yeah? Yeah. Um, in the current age, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm an older teacher, yeah? I've been teaching mm -hmm. for a long time. But in the current age now, it seems, how do we engage students to read physical books or to actually read books where, you know, when I ask them if they like to read, they say, oh, I'd rather watch the YouTube or I'd rather watch the movie or. Yeah, 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 yeah. How, yeah, yeah. yeah. how do we encourage them? To, uh, so you're to, talking uh, in, uh, what is that, Indonesian, Indonesian uh, kind of like Indonesian situation, right, Mr. Martin? Yeah. Indonesian students, yeah. I, well, I I'm, I guess is I I'm guessing it's probably worldwide these days. Okay. But, right. but certainly in in my experience, I've been in Indonesia for 17 years now. Uh, Whoa, so, so yeah, long. Certainly, <laughs> um, in my experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, with the Indonesians, um, like what I said earlier, they learned a lot. They like learning a lot from seeing. Mm. something and then they if they are interested in it they're gonna find uh, find it in the uh, in the books or they are going to find it in an article you know so um just this is only my personal suggestions just usually i uh, try to get my students interested in the topic first even though they have to see they have to imitate they have to speak but then later uh, uh, um, what is that? Giving them the task in which they have to read from certain kind of source. But because everything is now going digital, um, we also cannot uh, avoid the what is that? The facts that everything will be presented online. That um, but it doesn't mean that they will not read. They will only that we know how to get them click with the uh, topic, with your class, and then also with the activities too, kind of like that. Yeah. Especially with the Indonesian, so win their hearts first, then they will do anything for you. <laughs> really, really, Mr. Martin, yeah, really. So get them, get them like your class first, yeah, and they will be. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome, Mr. Martin. Right, Ocha? Okay, thank you, Mr. Martin, for the question. And we also have an opinion from Ms. Ms. Nurul. Uh, she mm -hmm. said, it's an awesome experience to join. Thank you, Ms. Nurul. Thank you. And also, there is a question from Mr. Abdul. How to give a project to lower students, grade one to three, like um, editing, but we didn't teach them about editing. You have to teach them about editing. Okay. <laughs> Right. So, uh, Mr. Abdul, uh, thank you. So, usually when you want to give a project to uh, the lower grades, uh, to any kind of grades, actually, so it depends on the topic and then it depends on the, uh, uh, on the skills of the unit uh, that is being taught, you know. You can just uh, suddenly coming up with something new, yeah? So, you have to start from something that has already been uh, done, for example. So, that's why... Um, uh, uh, what is it? I come up with the idea of giving the charity because we are talking about the old toys and the new toys. So usually we're just going to uh, put a, uh, put the old toys into a giveaway program, kind of like that. So 
you had you need to find out the relationship between the topic and then the activity kind of like that and then in the last activities for example um the last project is kind of like only making up a poster um that will uh, for a problem and solutions why i'm doing that because uh, I, I put them, uh, I put emphasize on the wording, you know, that's why I teach them to understand the text. That's why I, uh, I get them into comparing and contrasting. That's why I put them into differentiating between facts and opinions, because I want them to come up with both facts and opinions later on in their project. Yeah. So whatever project, make it suitable to the topic and then also to the skills being taught. Uh, in the unit, kind of like that. Okay. 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 Thank you. And also, we have uh, one question here from Miss Jatu. Here, Miss mm -hmm. Julie, could you please kindly share a kind of question for the evaluation or quiz about reading with hearts for primary six? Oh, okay. So actually, you can find it a lot in the internet, kind of like that. But uh, if you want to, so. Uh, what is that later in, uh, if you if you have my hand out so there is kind of like a part kind of like the questions that you can ask your students you can use those kind of questions as uh, what is that as the evaluation or quizzes and then if you want to give uh, kind of like open ended questions or maybe multiple choice but if you are giving multiple choice question be careful so you need to uh, what is that to be careful with the wording i mean uh, do not uh, do not use the same word, but use different word with the same meaning in the choices of uh, in the choices of the answers, and then uh, you gonna uh, kind of like play with the structure a little bit, kind of like putting into passive and active, kind of like that, and then uh, sentences with um, intransitive or transitive verbs, kind of like that. So you need to, uh, to play with the wordings if you are going to do, uh, what is that, multiple choice. But um, personal open-ended questions related to the topic will be okay. But the answer will be in paragraph, kind of like that. Okay. And then you just need to find out, uh, you just need to take notes on, okay, the keywords that I want to, uh, what is that, that I want my students to have in the, in the answers is are this one, this one, and this one. Kind of like that. That will be easier for you. Yeah. Okay. And I also have a question here from Miss Maya. Yeah. It is related to the last activities we did, Miss Yuri. Are they allowed to search information from the internet? Because some might not know the examples of endangered animals. And how do we make sure that the information our students find in the internet is accurate? Okay, All right. So thank you. All right. So uh, if you pay attention to my activity earlier, I provide them with the link, right? So they are not looking for themselves, actually. Yeah. So they, they also read uh, from the sources that I provide them. And then also, if necessary, you can also ask your students just to put uh, the link of the web into their work. So that also you can check whether they are referring into the accurate uh, sources or not. If you want the, what is that, accurate sources, so actually you can also teach them, uh, uh, what's that, give them the idea kind of like, you can use Wikipedia if you want to, because there are a lot of knowledge that's quite common and that you can use uh, uh, National Ge uh, Geographic. You can use kind of like, so you give the webs to them, the choices of the webs. That's, I think that's better, right? So they know where to explore instead of explore widely anywhere. Uh, kind of like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Thanks, Riri. And there's also one more from Miss Riri. Thank you so much for this two-hour session. I believe teachers have lots of ideas to teach reading and apply thoughts as well. I suggest why don't we have writing or speaking activity too, teachers preparation and rubrics. Wow, this is a good idea, but maybe in another class, yeah, Miss, yeah? Yeah, another in another class, yeah. So actually, kind of like, uh, I have writing, actually. The poster is writing, right? See, the poster making, that's the writing. Mm -hmm. Speaking, I did a lot of speaking activities earlier. Okay, and I also, uh, 
sometimes uh, when you want to do the writing, okay, so start with something small, yeah. So getting them uh, answering your questions through the chat, that's also writing. Uh, usually I use that a lot just to check whether my students can uh, do the spelling right or not, kind of like that. And then, then you can just move on. Oh, okay, so uh, I can give this, this kind of task to them. And then also when you ask them to categorize, uh, to find out the information earlier, kind of like, okay, so what kind of animals or what regions uh, what causes their, uh, what is endangered, uh, those are also writings because they have to present it in Padlet. But it could also be speaking if you want them to present. But that's also a good idea, Miss Mary. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I think one more question, Miss Yuli, here yeah, is from yeah. Miss Kolida. What's the best way of grading students' final product, for example, poster or presentation? Do we rely more on how they present their ideas or the content or the ideas more? Okay, right. So whether, uh, thank you. So whether you want to give them writing or speaking, it's all depend on you, kind of like depends on, uh, I want the, uh, to come up with uh, speaking activities because my students uh, seems to uh, be kind of like to be more skillful in speaking. Yeah, so I don't want them to get nervous by doing writing. So I'm gonna, just going to give them speaking. That will be okay. And then when they are doing the presentation, do both. So you're going to, uh, what is that, provide gradings for the content and also the language too. So and let them know the rubric. And also if you want them to write an essay, for example, so please do. But do not forget to teach them how to write an essay first. But better in paragraph because it's going to be easier for you to grade, you know? And then also do not forget, all right, so your paragraph will be graded in terms of the language and the content. Always both, yeah? Okay. okay. Yeah, thank you. I think one more because this question is interesting, Miss Yuli. Um, are the questions why and how always belong to hot? <laughs> okay. Not always, actually, <laughs> right? So if the question why is about uh, reading comprehension and it is already there, it's a uh, loss, right? But if the question why, like for example, like the last activity that I asked, why do you choose the three animals? That's going to be hot because you're going to need to analyze, you're going to need to evaluate, you're going to need to, uh, what is that, to compare and contrast, kind of like that. So it can be both. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Lee. So um, due to the limited time, I have to end the Q&A session. But if you still have any inquiries, you can write your questions to the email and WhatsApp number as displayed on the screen. So you can take a note of the contact information. And also, I would like to say thank you very much, Ms. Lee, for the insights and ideas. You thank, you. Thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Yeah, and I'm sure our educators here will take away some ideas with them and are able to help their students to learn better. And thank you very much, dear educators. You can uh, show us the reactions using the reaction column if you like this session a lot. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for the reactions. Wow, we have got so many reactions here, Miss Yuli. Wow, you are very close. Thank you. Okay. You're the best, everyone. <laughs> Baik, uh, Bapak dan Ibu, seperti ajakan di sesi perkenalan buku Bagaimana Kalau 16 Anak Indonesia Menulis Cerita oleh Ibu Ana Rimba Poa, selaku CEO dan founder Mentari Group tadi, maka kami sudah menyediakan pre-order form untuk mencatat pemesanan Bapak dan Ibu. Silakan dapat mengisi Google Form melalui tautan yang akan saya kirimkan ya di kolom chat. Ya. Berikut adalah tautannya, silahkan jika ingin melakukan pemesanan, diklik saja pre-order formnya dan harga setiap kopi adalah Rp70.000. Buku Bagaimana Kalau 16 Anak Indonesia Menulis Cerita ditulis oleh para penulis muda yang tentunya berbakat, para penulis Indonesia dan dengan cerita yang sangat seru, original, autentik, uh, imajinatif juga tentunya ya, dan Buku ini adalah hasil kerjasama dengan editor ternama Reda Gaudiamo. 
Okay, and educators, for those who would like to have today's materials or files, you may download it through the link on the screen or please also check on the chat box. Yeah, some of you have already asked me about the presentation material, so here it is. You can download it through the link. Okay, and also in case some of you haven't filled in the attendance form, now displayed on the screen is the link for attendance form. So please, if you haven't filled it in, please you can uh, fill it in right now. Hanya bagi Bapak Ibu yang belum mengisi attendance form ya, Bapak Ibu silahkan dapat diisi sekarang. Uh, akan kami tunggu selama satu menit ya. <tuh> 